This is about how we learn about nature, how we learn the laws that govern the processes, various physical processes in nature. It all starts with uh, an observation. You must have heard laws of physics are the result of uh, careful observations and precise measurements. But let's consider a, a trivial example to highlight this idea. Say so we have a, a junction of four roads here and uh, say this slightly wider road here and uh, this slightly narrow. Somebody who has never been to the city has, uh, is in the city and then he is fascinated by the traffic signals, how the traffic is controlled. He doesn't know anything about how the traffic lights operate. So he is standing at this corner. Now in a while he will notice these things like say when uh, the traffic light, he is able to watch the traffic lights let's say. When the light for example here is red, uh, this traffic stops. When it is green, this traffic is moving. And same thing on this direction too. So you have, um, say, he's coming to a small kind of, a, the observation leading to a small conclusion that red light means stop, green light means go. Amber lights uh, take a little while. So he perhaps will realize that, uh, uh, well, when uh, the traffic is moving, this green light, and if they said there is a sudden red here, the vehicles already on the intersection are yet to clear it, right? And if this turns green at the same time, this will, traffic will collide with whatever is on the intersection. So you need to allow a small gap to for the vehicles to clear this gap. So he sees uh, that amber light means wait. So this amber light for these people means wait. So these people who are coming this way will get a little time to clear this uh, space here at the junction. So well, again this traffic can flow smoothly. So no collision. Amber light is meant for that. So basically observations lead to some conclusions. And uh, you may also notice that uh, uh, the green for this is of a longer duration than green for this. And he realizes that there is a uh, volume of traffic, traffic flow rate is uh, less here. So since the traffic flow is less, the less time is allowed for that to clear. So there's no reason why you should allow equal time. So both the, uh, well, traffics. So you have, um, well, in time interval depending upon the duration, depending upon the uh, flow of traffic. So well, that's it. This is a simple example and he has learned a rule that governs the behavior of traffic at a junction. Same is true of uh, physical processes. You observe and then you measure. In this case there was no measurement. At, at best you could say if this uh, green light was for 40 seconds and this was for 20 seconds, uh, the traffic flow here is twice the traffic flow here. So there is no real measurement here. But yes, when calibrating that uh, green light duration for both sides, the traffic uh, department would have taken care of that aspect. So he can make some sense out of whatever he observes. Of course, you could uh, go to the policeman and ask for the rules and maybe the policeman would uh, provide him with a rule book. But we are not so lucky with the rules of nature. Nobody gives us a big book and says, look, it's all contained here, how everything behaves. We have to learn them ourselves the hard way. Mind you, observations uh, sometimes can be conflicting, uh, difficult to make sense out of. These are very simple observations. And uh, in case of nature, the observations can be pretty complicated. Sometimes they're too quick for our observation and so making sense out of them is a bit difficult. But consider the falling bodies. Falling bodies have been observed by everybody since a long time. Fairly smart people who are very good at building large cities, run societies. 
well they did not make they could not make sense out of the falling bodies they were like heavy bodies falls first which seems common sense and light bodies falls uh, slower and stuff like that they were confused they could make sense out of it and uh, why does uh, stone fall it says that's natural for it that's natural place well they say uh, well air natural places above you and uh, water and uh, solid objects have natural place below you so that's where they go well it took a very long time for us to understand it in fact forget about uh, why the objects behave the same the way they do i'm talking of falling bodies well, we did not even know how they behave, like in the sense which falls faster, larger body or smaller body. Of course, eventually it took Galileo's experiments to prove that, uh, um, well, heavy body and light body fall at the same rate. Uh, the, there is a famous anecdote about dropping objects, heavy and light objects from a tall tower, leaning tower of Pisa. And uh, you know what happened? Well, compared to lighter bodies, heavy bodies will suffer, uh, uh, the, the air resistance is a little less as a ratio to its weight. So, they take slightly less time, but Galileo recognized that. Galileo also realized that uh, you have to experiment in a lab to learn about the nature outside. Seems a bit funny, you must close your doors and watch uh, behavior inside your home in controlled conditions to learn about what is outside. And uh, Galileo, thanks Galileo, thanks Galileo, we have well, learned a good deal about how the bodies fall. They fall at the same rate, he says. Now, um, let's uh, do an experiment and uh, uh, say ourselves and uh, well, all we have is a uh, 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 scale to measure distances and uh, uh, a stop clock. Say so that's all we have. We're fascinated by the bodies rolling down inclined planes. You see that the longer the inclined plane, uh, greater is the time taken to reach the bottom. We can make out that longer, greater time. But what is the relation? So for this we need measurements. So imagine uh, uh, an inclined plane on which a rolling object rolls and then as it reaches the bottom somebody times that uh, motion. So he has uh, tabulated values of distance traveled and time taken. So he doubles the distance and measures the time, double, triples the distance, measures the time, increases the length, the distance in regular uh, intervals and then measures time. Well, he can definitely make out that as L increases, T increases, but what is the exact order? Well, with a little effort, I think you will learn the mathematical relation. Well, when he, he definitely will see that when L doubles T doesn't double, it's less than double. Because he realizes that first L is traveled at a lower speed and next L is traveled at a higher speed. The speed is increasing. He has no way of measuring the speed. He has only a scale to measure the, the distance and a clock to measure time. So, well, how does he establish the relation? A oh, little bit of work maybe, and particularly because this rule is simple, you'll end up with uh, L by T squared is a constant. Or you can plot a graph and see that the graph is uh, a parabola. So you'll learn that L by T squared is a constant. So he has uh, learned uh, a rule of nature. Well, by doing an experiment. Suppose you had asked him, uh, how does velocity of this object vary? How fast, how fast is it moving? It gets faster and faster. But then he doesn't know how that depends on time. This dependence is established. So, well, he could do an experiment, uh, not an experiment, say, let's say he guesses. Good bit of uh, uh, physics is about guessing what you do not know. For example, Newton did not know what a light, light is. He assumed that light is a stream of carpuzzles. Well, that guess went bad as we all know. But then even a greatest, greatest, greatest scientist of the time, his guess went bad. So we do not know, so we guess and we follow the consequence of the guess. Well, the 
consequences of the gases were like light carbuscles travel along straight lines and so reflection and refraction were nicely explained. But there were other phenomena which were observed later and Newton's carbuscle theory fails to explain them. But anyway, let us see what we can do with velocity here. We will guess, we will assume that velocity increases linearly with time. It started from rest and this is velocity and this is time. Velocity increases linearly with time. We do not know whether it is increasing linearly with time or not. That is a guess. But if velocity increases linearly with time, this graph would be something like v is equal to kt. So, time t this will be kt, right? Time t this will be kt. And this area of the triangle is half kt squared. This is a velocity time graph, so the area must be displacement. So, you will end up seeing that uh, the displacement or the distance travelled is proportional to the square of time. So, that is what you established by experiment. So, your guess is right. So, you guess, follow the consequence of the guess and if that is what is seen in nature, that is what can be tested by an experiment, then your guess must be right. And that is it. How do you make a, uh, how do you learn laws of nature? You observe, you measure and if there is a relation, you establish it. Luckily for us, most of the early physics, the basic physics is full of very simple relations like the relation f is equal to m a, the Newton's law in mathematical form. That is a pretty simple law, right? And it governs the behavior of anything that moves, be it a feather, be it stone, be it air raising up. Well, anything that moves is governed by Newton's second law of motion. Of course, later on we learned that the law will have a problem with very, very fast moving objects, objects moving at close to speeds of light, but that is a different story altogether. But in the early days of observation where objects were moving at fairly small speeds, a physical may have is applicable to everything that moves, be it butterfly flapping its wings and flying, anything, anything that moves, a physical may. So, can a law be simpler than that? Thank nature for making it simple for us. And thank Newton for finding out that law of uh, nature. You have a good time.